15, all right. So I gotta stop at uh, five till eight. All right, this is HRM Cesar, St. Augustine Day, Buena Pump Day. Anyway, um, this is gonna be part four, and I think I'm gonna retitle part one, part two, part three, which I did yesterday, um, because of the tsunami that happened. So um, you'll find me under, this one's going to be titled, uh, Tsunami, tsunamis, plural, the stupid victims and their stupid government that allows it to happen because the victims allowed it just as much as the government did because uh, they weren't prepared. And uh, California's not prepared either, not for anything like that. But you can be. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to see tsunamis, pictures of tsunamis in the 50s that were taken from high altitudes waves were unbelievably huge. Nothing compared to, thir so that was just 13 feet. Nothing compared to what I saw in the photographs. Uh, and it was then, as a kid, I thought, well, why don't they build, uh, you know, special type things to protect people. You can't probably protect from the physical damage, buildings and stuff like that. My first three, you know, I do these on the spur of a moment, so I've only got 15 minutes. And the spur of the moment means this is unrehearsed. Everything you're hearing is um, off the cuff, unrehearsed, and a lot of hate and piss uh, about my life and how your America, your collective society, sits there and helps all these people and uh, hurts the economy even further by sp throwing money in that direction. The taxpayer has to pay for all of this. And eventually, sooner or later, one way or the other, and, uh, and other countries pitch in, of course, and oh yes, I'm sure that that's a very good thing and it's people with white hats doing the good deeds. But no matter how many good deeds you do, you can't undo the damage that your tax dollars do to innocent children in the wars you're waging in Afghanistan and Iraq and in Panama before when they went after Noriega. They killed innocent children in that war, in that little, well, police action. Posse action is really what it was. And, uh, and Vietnam, with all the napalm kids, and eyelids burned off, and all this kind of stuff. I've shown pictures of it. You go on reality's supreme being and you'll see all the pictures. I show them. And I only get like, like I said in the first part one, I only get two, uh, two digit and three digit figures as far as people viewing my thing. Some people have said, oh, well, you're ranting and raving and I can't understand what you're saying. Well, it's because there's so much that happens to one person. Sure, I can write it out, but it would take me I don't know how much money, and I don't have the kind of money it would to explain how evil your society, the evils that your societies do every day. The people like me that live here, that were born here. And what does it matter whether you're born here or not? It doesn't matter. Civil rights are civil rights. That's why I'm going to title this Tsunamis so I get most attention and the people will see me and I'll probably get a lot of snide remarks and bullcrap comments you know, and these people they haven't gone through what I've gone through they haven't lost all their homes lost their lost any, everything and not by a natural disaster I lost everything I lost by your crappy laws the city of Los Angeles the county of Los Angeles those crappy people on the LA City Council the crappy voter turnout you all should be ashamed of yourselves in L.A. for not voting. When I ran for mayor, if I'd run for mayor, L.A. would not have gone into the recession it's gone into. I can guarantee it because I had new programs that would have people would have been standing around City Hall in long lines. If I'd been elected president years ago, this country would never have had 9-11 happen to them because I predicted it nine no, excuse me, seven years before it happened is when I predicted the 9-11 event in a letter to the Clinton administration, 13 feet long, 3 feet wide. The 13 feet long letter was in giant letters 
with a series of letters along one side sealed with the presidential gold seal of the United States of America. I own that seal on that document sent in a mailing tube to the Clinton administration. They totally ignored it. And I gave hints. I didn't give direct comments because I told them at that point in time in 19 and 1993 I hated this country already. They had done previous damage to me over and over and over again. What? Because of my cars in my yard? Because of nosy neighbors? You care more about your pets than you care about people's rights, civil rights. You care more about giving fines to people than you care, and this I'm talking to the government, than you care about saying, what can I do to help? You know, in Monty Python's uh, uh, Meaning of Life, you know, they have a bunch of English people uh, fighting the Zulus in Africa. And, and some guy makes a, it's a comic remark, but it is, it's so true. And the comic remark is this. He says, oh, bloody hell, you know, uh, I, I kill a hundred of these buggers out here and I get a fucking medal. Well, I kill one out there in my own country and they'll throw me in jail for life if not if not you know put them on death row I've been on death row I've been on death row for more than 30 years walking free in the United States having people make false police reports about me me uh, making my my uh, my return complaints to internal affairs repeatedly, them finding, uh, of course, you know, it's like asking the fox to watch the hen house when you call internal affairs. They're so full of crap, it's not even funny. And the fire department, same thing. You know, this is off the cuff. I, I, I try to stay on line, and it's not that I'm suffering from any illness. It's that so much has happened to me, I can't fit it in 15 minutes. I can't fit it in even... A hundred hours. I might be able to fit it into a book, but who would give a crap? This country's so illiterate, and, you know, what, so what? Books, I find thousands of them thrown away every day in, in the thrift stores. So, so let's talk about <clears throat> tsunamis and civil rights and the stupid victims that allowed themselves to get wiped out like that. If they'd been prepared, there wouldn't have been this terrible drama. Oh, it would have been terrible with the, the physical damage, the building damage, but more people would have been saved, life saves. I saw on today on CNN, I saw President Obama is still oh so depressed about, uh, uh, disheartened about the Japanese and the, the, the thing. Well, shoot, you should be just as disheartened what happened in, in, in uh, Indonesia and over there in the Indian Ocean where, where everything got destroyed over there. And of course, previous president, ex-president Clinton goes and visits the area along with ex-old man Bush, you know, uh, you know, the white trash that they are, you know, they, they are, they're all white trash, and there's black trash, and there's uh, Asian trash, and, and these people, you know, I hate, hate to use racial, racial comments, but why should you call them anything else? They're trash. They're trash because... They don't know how to orchestrate the best things and avenues for people to be able to go down to, to help make their lives successful. Sure, a person, a single person, an individual has to take responsibility for their own uh, success and their failures, but not all the failures. A lot of the failures are at the hands of people who I said, run things, crazy laws. Uh, on my part one, part two, part three of that, that's titled civil rights. It'll 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 go into it. You know, I jump around and, and jump from subject to subject because I use a lot of comparative comments. But you know, why? You know, it's like I said. You know, I I think I I can I can sit and think to myself. A lot of things that I need to say to the, not the people of the United States because they don't concern me so much, but the people of the world, 
um, that if they maneuvered and orchestrated the world's direction in, correctly with 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 intelligent guidance. There's no intelligent guidance on this planet. It's all stupid. It's all what's in it for me right now. And um, you know, man, you see the media, and I, I just I want I want to throw up. It's such a game. The Bilderberg Group, uh, their 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 literal monopoly on who gets aired and who doesn't. Now the media. You know, they could challenge me and say, no, that's not true. We're the media, and we'll put something on there if we decide it's newsworthy. No, wrong. The rich money interests that run the corporations, they're the ones that tell you what to put on the news. You'll put, like I said in my other thing, you'll put Britney Spears and Martin and Charlie Sheen. Uh, you'll put, heck, you'll put uh, Charles Manson. He gets mentioned in the newspapers every time he comes up for a parole. But he does get mentioned. Did I ever get mentioned? No. You'll find me in some sleazy magazines here or there. FHM Magazine, November 2004 has me in there. Um, at that time, the, the city and county of Los Angeles was attacking me all the way through. Now, what are they scared of? They can have their own private opinion about me, even though they're not doctors. They can say that I'm... Bipolar, I'm crazy, they can say all they want to, but I, I've yet to see anyone that's called me that say that they're a bona fide doctor. And even a bona fide doctor would be way out of his, his or her league to label me anything without living with me, hearing all of my stories, and then making a diagnosis. And they don't do it that way. No, they listen to you just talk. Oh, he jumps around from subject to subject, so he's got to be, there's got to be something wrong with him. He's got to be bipolar. Is he's on drugs, or he drinks, or he's lying. If anybody's lying, it's you people. You lie to yourselves every day. Every time you pay taxes, you kill innocent children. 75% of your tax dollars goes to the military-industrial complex. That's why Eisenhower said, beware the industrial complex before he left office. And Kennedy warned you in the 60s, a handful of corporate individuals will control this world soon. Because they started the Bilderberg Group in 1954 in a hotel called the Bilderberg in Belgium. And then after that, every year, that's why they call it the Bilderberg Group, they, they meet every year to discuss worldwide public policy, the International Monetary Fund, the oil companies, the oil magnets, the newspaper magnets, the Coca-Cola company. What's a president of Coca-Cola doing at a Bilderberg Group? No. If there's something wrong with your country, it's all of you. You're all full of it. You're all full of garbage. And you deserve every bit of terror and horror that you deserve to get because you've done it to me. I've yet to see one person in power of authority have the guts, have the courage to say, all right, Chez, we're going to put you in front of Congress with the president, both sections, and you're going to lay your heart out and tell everybody what happened to you and how evil this country did to you and your civil rights. And still I would want to leave. You kept me prisoner here for more than 20 years. I called France once. Can't you can't you take me in as for political asylum? Because these people are crazy here in America. If I was a country, a separate country, I would have nothing to do with America. I would ask it for nothing, even if there was a disaster. Because America carries nothing but bad karma with it. From the time they landed here, all the separate countries, Spain, England, France, and they planted their lousy, stinking rags and claimed the country. Claimed a country that's not yours? There was somebody already here. Duh, quote unquote. If anybody's stupid, it's you people. And the people who call me and make comments. And yeah, so what? You go on YouTube and you say, I'd like to be your friend. What is that going to do? A protest across the whole country. Remember the movie Gandhi? Gandhi says, oh, a general strike. And Gandhi said, no, a day of fasting. <laughs> and it worked. And of course, they arrested Gandhi right away. But he called it a day of fasting. So why don't we have a day of fasting? You don't, don't buy gasoline. Not a day. A month of fasting. A religious holiday for a whole month. No oil companies don't get any money. They don't get any taxes. The government doesn't get nothing for a whole month. You watch them come to their knees. Well, yeah, they're scared of people like me. Because there's always a chance, even with YouTube, that maybe people will get pissed enough 
to say, you know, Chez is right. We need to revolt. We all need to revolt all at the same time and tell them where to go to hell. Because the, these representatives do not know what they're doing. We got to put smart people in there, and I know how to do it. I knew how to do it back then, all the way back to 1984. And they still don't do it. Anyway, I think uh, the timing is almost uh, 15 minutes. So I don't want to go over my time. I may do another 15 minutes, but uh, this is part four. And uh, let's see if you really want to do a revolution. I've been ripped off of my whole life, 30 years worth, and it's still happening.